For our eighth stop on this 5,000 mile road trip, I wanted to explore a budget golf course in Pinehurst, North Carolina, Foxfire Resort and Golf Club, only 10 minutes outside of Pinehurst and it only costs $50 to play. We're gonna take a deep dive into everything this club has to offer and show you guys why this is the best budget golf course in Pinehurst. All right, let's take a look at the clubhouse and pro shop here at Foxfire. Looks like a nice building it's got. So we're walking up the steps. You have the range token machine here. So make sure you get your balls here before you go over to the range. Let's take a look at what they got inside the shop. So taking a look around the pro shop, they have a decent selection of stuff. Really nice straight down custom polos here, a ton of different club options, even some Scotty cameras and really cool AME head covers. Those are like the high quality ones with their logo on them. A couple different bag options, a really cool uh, white one over there. Then actually a decent selection of shoes, foot toys, um, gloves, balls. So overall like a really solid pro shop in here, you know, and a couple drinks as well. So you, know, you can get what you can get before you go out for your round, uh, get some merch because it seems pretty high quality. Here at Foxfire, you have a driving range just off of the clubhouse. You get the balls right outside the pro shop, then you walk down here to a nice little driving range, limited to about 200 yards just because of the space that they have. But in terms of driving range balls, we got tailor-made yellow range balls, pretty solid for a resort style course. Two courses here again at Foxfire. Let's hit some balls, loosen up. Just got an eight iron and a wedge. Let's see what we got today. So on the opposite side of the clubhouse, you have a nice little putting green. I believe you can chip over here as well, um, but you know you don't have actual holes. You just have some flag placeholders. I don't know if they do change into actual holes, but these greens look really slick. Just gonna hit a couple putts, loosen up, and uh, then we'll head out. We're actually gonna play the gray course. It's gonna be the harder golf course here, so see what we can shoot. All right, we got first hole on the gray course here. Par five, there's water up there that comes into play, so. I'm gonna hit a four iron up here and then be short so we can lay up. School par five starting hole. Just leaking right. Theme of the day is gonna be confidence. Every, every swing is gonna be a confident swing. We gotta lay up over the water here, just hit a little fade. Yep, that's a confident swing. Should be up there in the fairway. Great speed, we're all pretty true actually. So we are happy to start with the par there on the first, even through one. Hole two is a par three uphill, it's like 209. Uh, there's a big bunker short of the green, so you gotta get it up there. I have six, I don't know if it's enough. I hit it really good, just go. Oh, just broke a little bit more than I saw. Again, a good putt. We want the confidence up today. Pinehurst kind of bat me around a little bit, so we want the redemption, but not a bad bogue on this hole. So it's an interesting start out here. You go par five into a really hard uphill par three, and then you got another par five up the hill. About 518 from back here. We're playing about 6,700 yards today. That's the tips here on the gray course and on the red course, it's about the same, but. We have driver, confident swing. Oh, just a chicken wing. We'll push. I mean, it's a pretty firm bunker. Can't really get under it. Another good putt. Just didn't break quite as much as I thought. The only two par fives on this side come up very quick. Hole four is a par four. Um, pretty straight away, moves a little bit to the left. I have five wood, 396 I believe it says, so. Oh my gosh. Well, we're taking a drop, playing it as a hazard. So third shot here, we have 120 yards into the screen, up and over a little bit of a tree. Hit 
There we go. And that's a par. Okay, we got hole five here, straight away downhill par four. There's some bunkers up there on the left side. We got five wood again, 379, so not too far. Oh. All right, keep it moving. Hole six, little dog leg to the right with water all the way down the right side. Just trying to take it pretty much straight away with a driver. Look what happens when I'm nice and smooth. Go. Oh, shit. Barely snuck it in. Par three, 188 for back here, but way downwind, I have an eight iron, nice and smooth now. Get up there. Wow, I hit that right on line too. Poured it in. Those are the putts that, when they do go in, they're clutch. Hole eight, little dog leg left, par four. Got driver, down the left hand side. Little fade. Well, we're taking a drop because I hit it in someone's yard. If it goes, it's good. Oh yeah. Oh, you gotta get it there. Might have had it if I hit it a little harder. But, boogie after losing. Hole nine, 397, dog leg left. I'm gonna hit a little thing or two iron. It's, there's a lot of wind in right now. We're just scoot right under it. I hit it really hard. It's never gonna go in at that pace. Well, that's a bogue. Through nine, I believe we are three over trying to settle in. Hole 10 is 392, little dog leg left. I got two iron, because there's this tree on the left. It's bad. Oh, ended up right behind the hole. Hole 11. Fairy green two putt, that's what we're going for. Straight away, par four. Oh, stop it. Oh my God. Par three, hole 12, it's like 195 downhill, straight into the wind. Probably not. Whew. Snuck it in. That's what we needed to get this round back on track. Hole 13 is a par five. It's 500 something yards. Little dog leg to the right though. Sharp dog leg. We're going straight out at that bunker. Hit it really well. Not very smooth, but got away with it mostly. I just straight pushed that. That's a par. Hole 14 is pretty straight away. 360 something, I think. Nope. Oh. But that's a par. Got hole 15 here, 371, pretty straight away. Goes down to the right, just a little bit. Come back. How is that possible? 
uh, straight blade. Sit. Okay, well, a little bogue. All right, we have a par five here, 517. Try to take down that left side. If you're taking a drop, this is my third shot here. I hit a tree really hard and just couldn't find it. So third shot into the par five. Just swiped right across. There's just no rotation there or anything. Landed it too far. Right in the center. No good there. Bogey a short par five. Right. Hole 17 is a little par three. Downwind, 170. I have a, I'm gonna hit a little choke seven. I don't wanna swing hard at anything right now. Oh no, what are you doing? How's that? <sighs> Sometimes you get lucky. We got hole 18 here, 431. Little dog leg left. Got driver. Gonna try to take it over those trees right there. Nice little finishing hole they got. That's really short. Oh, can't believe that kicked left. There we go. Finished with an up and down par. Not sure what I shot, maybe 79, something along those lines, but you'll see it on the screen. That's Foxfire Gray. It was a lot of fun. Let's go up there, debrief, and give it a score. Now let's give Foxfire a rating with the 10 categories I came up with. The first is playability. Out there, you know, we played the gray course today. There is the red course, which I hear is a little bit easier. Um, but the gray course, there were a couple deep bunkers around the green that you did need to get it over. But they do offer tee boxes in the 4,600 yard range. And also the red course offers a tee box at 4,500 yards. Given that, I think golfers could come out here and have a good time. That'd be an eight out of 10. Next is design. Um, we are in Foxfire Village, North Carolina. And you know, I was over in Pinehurst this earlier this week and you don't really get stuff like this over in Pinehurst. You get big dog legs, blind tee shots, some elevation change. So I think the design was pretty solid. There were a couple holes in a row that you got like left-hand dog legs over and over again, but you know, overall the design was pretty solid. I'll give it a seven out of 10. Next is accessibility. So it's a public golf course here at Fox Fire. It offers two different golf courses and you can book online up to 10 days in advance. Um, so it's very accessible. And I think you could honestly find tee times same day or even a couple days before. So 10 out of 10 for accessibility, super easy to get on and get out and play here. Next is practice facility. So at Foxfire, they have a limited range up to about 200 yards. And then over here to my right, they have a chipping and putting green. Um, it's pretty solid. I would like to see maybe a range where we can hit drivers. Cause you know, if you go up to the first tee, you wanna rip driver and you haven't swung it, we all know where that's gonna go. So you know, given that, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10, but they offer good range balls and yeah, decent putting green, like I said. Next is the Pro Shop. As you saw when we went in there, it was a very nice Pro Shop, uh, laid out pretty well. A good selection of clothes, some head covers, uh, polos, um, even some golf clubs in there as well. Not necessarily the selection of other goods, you know, like hoodies, stuff like that. But you know, they have a, a bunch of merchandise in there that looked pretty solid. So it's a seven out of 10 for the Pro Shop. Next is location. Like I said, we're in Foxfire Village, North Carolina, about 10, 15 minutes outside of Pinehurst. Um, it seems like I'm not familiar with the area too much, but it seems outside of you know the golf course here, there's not necessarily a lot to do. Um, you have to drive into the Pinehurst Village area, um, but you know with the two golf courses here, it's pretty solid, so it'll get an eight out of 10 for location. 
Next is condition. So like I said, we played the gray course and the greens looked like they were recovering a little bit from aeration, but honestly they rolled pretty true. A couple of bare spots here and there out in the fairways and you know, not, not a ton of rough out there. Overall, the bunker seemed to be raked pretty well. Um, so condition, pretty solid, seven out of 10. Next is accommodations. They do offer stay and play packages. You probably saw along some of the holes, there were apartment style cabins that you can do a stay and play and play both the courses here. Um, given that, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 because there is stuff on property to stay. Next is the food. There is no halfway house here. Uh, looked like there was just a vending machine out there, but then inside there is a pub with a full menu. Um, given, you know, not a halfway house with some options when you're far away from the clubhouse, I'm gonna give food a seven out of 10, but like I said, they do have a full menu inside that you can go and get a drink or get something to eat after your round. So the final category, honestly, the most important in my eyes is overall value. And it costs you roughly $45 to come out and play full 18 here on either of the two courses. And they do say that if you book online, it's gonna be cheaper than calling or showing up to try to play. So just keep that in mind. But for that price range, you get something that's pretty unique for this area. You get elevation change, you get water, you get deep bunkers. I mean, you get a pretty good experience. Um, are you gonna get a big resort style feel like a Piners? No, but for this price point, you're not gonna find really anything else in this area for that. Because of that, overall value is gonna give it a nine out of 10. So that gives Foxfire Gray a 79 out of 100, which puts it here among courses in the same price range category, and then here among all the courses I've reviewed thus far. Make sure to subscribe to follow along this 5,000 mile journey down the East Coast up to the Midwest. We are on our way to Myrtle Beach, so stay tuned for those videos. We're playing some pretty cool places over there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.